Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Not chapter 1 verses 3 to 5 I greet you today grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father to whom be glory forever and ever amen brothers and sisters in Christ as you know today is Thursday. And in our culture, Thursdays are pretty important. For instance, if you uh, are a football fan during the NFL season, we all look forward to celebrating Thursday night football. Why? Because Thursday is important. Back before coronavirus and, and all of the restaurants and bars around town have been been closed up there. You might used to see a, a, a sign or an advertisement talking about Thirsty Thursdays. Come in with your friends, come in with your family, have a meal, celebrate. Thirsty Thursdays. It's almost Friday, right? Thursdays, we celebrate those because they're important in our world. You may have also noticed that on Facebook these days, there's a new phenomenon that's been coming around the last few years. It's called Throwback Thursdays. Throwback Thursday, if you've never done it, uh, is an opportunity on Facebook to go back into your photo vault and find pictures from last year, five years ago, 10 years ago. Maybe it's yourself, maybe it's your kids, and you repost those pictures. Throwback Thursdays. You didn't realize Thursday wasn't such an important day, did you? All right. You know, back, I was even thinking the other day, um, in our society, in our culture today, we have become a Netflix generation, right? We binge watch television. My wife and I are binge watching Ozark right now, right? But back in the day, and this may still be true, but I, I don't have cable, so I don't really know. But back in the day, Thursday nights were even known as being a night to watch television. Back when the office was on and friends were on, it was always on what night? Thursday because Thursday was Thursday night primetime television. We don't stop and think about it, but Thursday is an important day. One other thing I was thinking about the other day was Thanksgiving. We always celebrate Thanksgiving on what day? Thursday, that's right. Well, as you know, today is Thursday. And in the church during Holy Week, Thursday is an important day as well. Yes, on Palm Sunday, on Palm Sunday, Jesus entered into Jerusalem. He entered into Jerusalem on a, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. 
He came and he, he fulfilled Old Testament prophecies. He was welcomed by shouts from the crowd, shouts of Hosanna, praise God, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now on Palm Sunday, Jesus was acknowledged by that crowd for being the Messiah, for being the Christ, for being that anointed prophet, priest, and king who they were waiting for. Yes, on Good Friday, we're going to have an opportunity to remember. We're going to have an opportunity to reflect. We're getting an opportunity to, to take time to think about Jesus, about how he was betrayed, how he was arrested, how he was deserted by his disciples. We're going to get an opportunity to think about and reflect on how he was falsely tried, how he was condemned, how he was ridiculed. We're going to get an opportunity to reflect on how Jesus, on how Jesus was beaten, how he was crucified on a cross and buried in a tomb. On Good Friday, we're going to have an opportunity to, to remember those famous words of Peter in 1 Peter 2.24. You remember the words? Peter reminds us, he says, he, he's talking about Jesus. He says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to our sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have all been healed. And yes, on Easter Sunday, we're going to get to hear those famous words. You know the words. There were people of Jesus' disciples that were looking for him. You remember those words of the angel. They were looking for Jesus who was crucified, and the angel said, you know the words. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. And as Christians all over the world are going to get, get the opportunity on Easter Sunday to proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. But tonight, tonight is Thursday. And we have the opportunity as the body of Christ to celebrate this thing called Maundy Thursday. And it makes us all stop and ask ourselves, 2,000 years ago when all of this went down with Jesus, what happened on this day? Surprisingly, there were a lot more things that happened than we often stop to think about. First and foremost, we know that Jesus, he sent Peter and John. He said to Peter and John, he goes, I want you to go and make preparations for us to eat a special meal together. That meal was the Passover. And while they were there, while they were celebrating the Passover, we all know this story. Jesus instituted a new meal. He instituted a new meal called the Lord's Supper. And he said things like, take and eat this bread. Take and drink this wine. This is my body. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. That happened on Thursday. What else happened on Thursday? This was the day where, where Jesus washed his disciples' feet. He set for them an example to follow. He showed them the way they should serve. That was on Thursday. Thursday was also the night where, where Jesus was preparing both himself and his disciples. He was trying to prepare both himself and his disciples for the fact that he was going to die. That happened on Thursday. Thursday was also the day where Jesus revealed that Judas, that Judas would betray him. Thursday was the day that, that Jesus revealed that, that Peter would deny him. That happened on Thursday. And as you know, on Thursday, that was the day late in the evening where Jesus went out to a garden. He went out to a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And there he prayed. He prayed to God. Amongst all the things he prayed, he said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. That happened on Thursday as well. You know, as Christians, we stop and reflect about, about Thursday of Holy Week, Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, and we remember all of those things. But sometimes we forget that Jesus did another thing on that Thursday. That was the day that he gave to his disciples. And I'm going to use a Latin word here so you can go home and brag about how you know some Latin. That was the day that Jesus gave to his disciples the mandatus. Say that with me. Mandatus. M-A-N-D-A-T-U-S. If you haven't heard it already, the mandatus is where we get the English word mandate. It's also where we get the word mondi for Maundy Thursday. You see, Jesus did all of those things on Thursday, but it was also the day that he gave his disciples the mandatus, the mandate, the command. If you have a Bible, turn with me there for just a moment to John chapter 13. We read it earlier in our scripture reading, but we, we look at John chapter 13, and in verse 34, Jesus gives the mandatus. He gives the command. Listen to what he says. He says, a new command I give you, love one another. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus gave that command, that mandatus to his disciples on Maundy Thursday. If you, if you look with me at the next verse in John 13, 35, Jesus continues on and he says this. He says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you <laughs> love one another. That's the mandatus. That is something that Jesus gave to his disciples on Maundy Thursday. If you flip with me in your Bibles to, to 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, Jesus is, is the, whole, the whole mandate that he gives us is reinforced by John. John says to them very clearly, he says, we love, we love because he first loved us. And so my prayer for you my prayer for me this Maundy Thursday, right in the midst of, of Holy Week, as we look back to Palm Sunday, as we look forward to Good Friday and Easter, my prayer for us tonight is that we would remember how important love is to God. My prayer is that we may all remember the words of John 3.16. You know these words, right? Right? In John 3, 16, we are reminded, for God so loved the world. That's people like you, that's people like me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You know, as Christians, we know these words of John 3, 16. In fact, most Christians could quote John 3, 16. But in light tonight of, of Jesus and in light of Maundy Thursday, in light of our reflection upon his mandate to love one another, we're reminded not just of John 3.16 and for God's love for the world, but we're also reminded of 1 John 3.16. You see, most people can quote John 3.16, but very few know 1 John 3.16. In fact, I'm going to read for you tonight 1 John 3, 16, 17, and 18. And when we think about the mandatus, when we think about Jesus' command to love one another, listen to what John says in 1 John 3, 16 to 18. He says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and we 
ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and for our sisters. He says, if anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? And then in verse 18, listen to what John says. He's just reinforcing the mandatus on Monday, Thursday that Jesus gave. He says in verse 18, he says, dear children, he said, us, he said let us not just love with our words or speech, but let us love with our actions and in truth. And you may say, well, how do we do that? How do we on Maundy Thursday fulfill the mandatus, the, the Maundy, the mandate that, that Jesus gave? I could give you a, a whole bunch of ideas, but here's just a few. By grace, through faith, as we're in the midst of a world right now where we can't even come to church together because of this thing called the coronavirus. One of the first and foremost ways that you can love one another is to practice social distancing. I was just like you a few weeks ago thinking, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And then I, I saw a facility for the elderly in DuPage County go from one case to 22 cases, to 46 cases in a week. And then I stepped back and went, maybe. <laughs> and I'm wondering if Jesus, <laughs> if he was here, would say one of the ways right now we can love one another is to practice social distancing because we simply don't know if we're carrying it. And you can love others by staying home, sheltering at home, who would have ever thought that's a way we could love one another? How do we carry out this mandatus? Here's a, another example. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of being home already. You know, it's like, fortunately, I'm blessed and, and, and I have several jobs that I work that I'm able to continue to serve. There's a lot of people that are stuck at home and just can't go anywhere. My wife is teaching from home. My kids are learning from home. We're you know, culture today, there's a lot of people who are alone and they're in their home and they're isolated. And I will tell you, it's much like winter right now out there. A lot of people struggling, a lot of depression. How can we carry out this mandatus in our life? Send out words of encouragement. Send out spiritual encouragement to people. I guarantee you there's people that need contact. Call your mom. Tell her you love her, right? I'm a son. We're bad at that, right? Send out words of encouragement. Right now, we're not able to meet together as the body of Christ in person, but there are so many churches, including our very own church here, where we're celebrating worship services on a weekly basis. Go onto the internet. It's a real easy thing to do. Just hit share. Share on Facebook. Share a text with your friends. It's so easy to copy a link. Who knows? Who, you have people in your life that are at home and it's an opportunity to, to go to church. And if you've invited them to, to watch a service online like you did, they'll get an opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. How do we carry out this mandate in our world? I would say... Be a generous steward. Be a generous steward. And I'm not just talking about sharing your toilet paper or sharing your hand sanitizer or sharing your masks or your gloves. I, I'm telling you, a lot of people right now are losing jobs. There's a lot of people that are struggling financially. This economy is taking a hit. And if you're in a position in your life where you can be a blessing, I'm a firm believer that as Christians, we have been blessed to be a blessing. If you have an opportunity, be a good steward of your money. Be a good steward of your time. I've got a friend of mine in Oswego who he's out of work right now, so is his wife. They and their family are home making masks. They're making masks. 
to help all of the emergency uh, medical personnel to continue to serve. Be good stewards of your money, your resources, your time. This is an opportunity as Christians, as we celebrate the mandatus to learn how to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is a great opportunity for husbands to practice loving their wives the way Christ loved the church. It's an opportunity for wives to practice submitting to their husbands as to the Lord. It's an opportunity for kids to practice it, honoring your father, honoring your mother. It's an opportunity for us to carry out the mandate. Love your neighbor as yourself. 1 Timothy 4.12 says, set an example in your speech and your conduct and your love and your faith and your purity. We have opportunities as Christians right now to set examples for others in those areas. Jesus made his mandate, his mandate, and he says, love one another just as I have loved you. I could go on and on, but a couple final things I would say during this season. Be steadfast in prayer. Be steadfast in prayer. The other day I was up till two in the morning. Uh, right before I went to bed, I noticed on Facebook that a, one of the pastors at Calvary Church in Naperville in the 60s, one of their Hispanic pastors passed away from the coronavirus. And it really just, I mean, we're all soaking this in, but it, it really hit me. I'm not praying enough. I need to be praying every day for people, for families, for those who not only have the sickness, but praying for those who are helping. My very own son has a, a girlfriend that he can't go visit because her mom is a nurse. She's coming home every day with the possibility of exposure. Be steadfast in prayer. Jesus says, love one another just as I have loved you. This is my mandatus. One final thought. When we talk about his mandatus to love one another, how do we love one another in actions and truth? My invitation would be to sow seeds of forgiveness. We're going to learn on Good Friday about how Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. He forgives us. His actions, his sacrifice, his work on the cross was to bring us the forgiveness of sins. But so many times in our life, we live in unforgiveness with others. Think about people in your life that you've had issues with over the years. And there's so many ways to make calls, Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, Facebook Messenger, regular telephone. Start to sow seeds of forgiveness. Start to love. We forget that on Monday, Thursday, Jesus didn't just wash his disciples' feet. He said, I want you to love others the way I've loved you. Would you pray with me? Lord, Monday, Thursday is a service where so many of us, we look forward to celebrating the Lord's Supper together as the body of Christ in remembrance of Jesus. We look forward to eating and drinking the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ under the bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. And we look forward to receiving the help, strength, and guidance of the Holy Spirit for living a new and holy life both now and forever. But Lord, we find ourselves in a place tonight where we're not able to do that. We're not able to celebrate the Lord's Supper. But Lord, my prayer for us tonight is that even though we may not be able to do this together because of the coronavirus, we would at least be reminded of Jesus' words in Matthew 18 to 20. He says, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Lord, we take great comfort in knowing that the church is people, not a building. As your church, Lord, 
I pray tonight that you would prepare our hearts this week to remember the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross for the sins of the world once for all. Prepare our hearts to remember his resurrection from the dead and his eternal victory over sin, death, and the devil. Help us, Lord, to shout Hosanna, Lord, save us. Help us reflect on the words, it is finished. And help us proclaim the words, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And Lord, tonight, in, in response to Jesus' mandate, his mandate, his mandatus, his command to love one another just as he has loved us. Help us as we respond to that. Help us to remember Paul's words in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Paul says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Lord, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, 31, love is the most excellent way. Tonight, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God the Father, and may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Show me and the world you love me, know me and 